Hi everybody, it's Claire back with another art journal video and in this one I am practicing drawing faces. So I know the truth of, <laughs> you know, practice makes progress. It really does. I don't claim to be an expert in drawing faces. I'm really not. And, um, you know, disclaimer, I'm not going for realism at all. Um, but I think just a representation of a face, um, I'm realising that I've got definitely got a way that I draw faces um, and I'm just kind of going to share this process with you today. So I'm playing in the creative white journal from um, Art by Marlene. This is the larger one of the two white ones that she does. Um, and I'm just using some of her gesso and just popping that onto the page. Now I'm just letting it down a bit with water because um, it's quite thick and um, I only needed a light coverage really. So the page is nice and dry and um, I am not yet at the point where I can sketch a face and go straight in with a uh, paint. Um, you know, maybe that's something I can aim for, but I'm really not, I'm not there. So I always have to start off by sketching the face in first in pencil, just so I can make sure that I've got my proportions kind of where I want them to be. Um, and I'm happy with the way it looks. Um, so you know the rules for drawing a face, you've got the, the shape of the face and then halfway down you've got the eyes um, and leave an eye space in between your two eyes and then halfway between the eyes and the chin that's your nose and halfway between the nose and the chin that's where your mouth goes. Roughly those proportions will work and then if you look at the distance between the eyes and the bottom of the chin and take that above the head that's where the very top of the hairline will go. Just like really rough guidelines. Um, and there are so many tutorials online, so many mixed media artists and other artists have ways of drawing faces. Really, it is just about finding that way that works for you, finding the representation of a face that you like. So, you know, I can say, I do it like this, and you might look at my faces and think, uh -uh, no, that's not for me, and that's okay. Um, I am not saying this is the only way, but this is how I do it. So I always sketch in first. Um, I definitely love to do female faces with long flowy hair. Um, for me, that's a chance to play with colour quite often. Um, however, on this one, I'm going to go a bit different. So you can see there, I was just sort of like working out where the top of the head was roughly going to be. Once you get that hair added in, um, you can get away with all sorts of nonsense in your face, really. And, you know, you can even do the hair covering one eye if you want. Draw half a face on the edge of your page. Anything goes. And, you know, just because um, there are some artists out there who are absolutely amazing with their realist, realism style. Um, and I absolutely take my hat off to them. I just do not know how they do it. That is not my style. Mine is definitely more of a, you know, here's a face I've drawn. It's not. Here's a photo of a face. So this pen that I'm using is um, one that I have rediscovered. I used to use these pens a lot in the past, particularly when I was drawing faces. It's from Jane Davenport and it's the licensed to quill um, black pen. It's a brush tip. Now, the wonderful thing about this pen is because it's brush tip, you can get different um, thicknesses on the lines that you draw, but also it dries waterproof. It does not move when you add colour over the top. So you're not going to end up with smudgy marks, um, which means it's perfect for going in here and adding in the features on my face. So I'm going and drawing them in to start off with. Then I'm going to add some colour over the top and then I'm going to add them back in again. So this just means that I can see all the areas that I've drawn, where I want things to be, and it helps me get going. So, you know, yeah, those lips might look a bit funky. It doesn't matter. A chin might be an odd shape. Her hair might not really, you know, whose hair falls like that? No, it doesn't matter. This is how I want to represent it. And I think as soon as you can get your head away from that, well, this isn't real, this doesn't look right, um, and just accept that, you know, this is what you've drawn and <laughs> this is okay. The sooner you will grow to accept the way that you represent faces and definitely the more you practice, the easier it gets. Um, 
yeah, like I say, I don't claim to be an expert, but I think just sort of practicing sketching faces, have a little book that you can go to and just play drawing faces with different hairstyles or no hair um, or closed eyes. There's, there are so many ways that you can um, start. So I am using um, Art by Marlene Paints. So because I'm playing, I have this weird thing that I do and I don't haven't really twigged I've done this before until I was playing in this journal and using Marlene's paints and I was like that's really interesting so in Dina's journals I tend to use Dina paints and Dina's things and in Marlene's journals I tend to use Marlene's products I can't explain it I don't know why it's very strange I'm so, I'm sure maybe I need to ask Lee about that my my middle child studying psychology perhaps they will understand so I'm doing a bit of reductive stenciling technique. So that's why I went in with the gesso first, um, because I knew that I wanted to create my background like this. So I'm adding the paint on with my finger. It creates a nice soft effect um, and I'm drying each one as I do it because I don't want to um, remove any of each layer as I go in with the next colour. Um, yeah, and it's such a great way to get a really pretty background, particularly with this flower stencil that's from Art by Marlene. Um, and these all these colours are from her range as well. They are lovely acrylic paints. They're not particularly as heavy body as um, Dina's, but, you know, nonetheless, they are really, really nice. And with that gesso on the page, they do, do move around really nicely. So I'm just going to complete this uh, journal background using these colours and this reductive stenciling technique just to get them on there. Um, all the colours of the rainbow of course. So one of the things that I love about this uh, pen from Jane Davenport is the fact that I can scribble some of the ink onto my glass mat and use a water brush to pick it up, water it down and use it for creating some shadowing on my face. Um, it's great because I know once I pop this down it won't move, it won't travel and you can see I can blot it and lift it off a bit if I feel it's too dark. This is one of those things where I watch people doing faces and they go in with really heavy shadows and I'm like <gasps> oh my gosh but actually it works. So um, what I would say here now I'm watching myself do this and thinking I'm being a bit scared of the shadow. You do need that shadow and you need it to be dark to create the depth in your face if you're bothered about that. Um, and so, you know, I think perhaps I should have gone in a bit darker, but hey ho, it doesn't matter. You live and learn. And I guess now I've said that I would probably definitely next time go in with a bit more shadow, a bit darker because it does give a bit more depth. So then here I have used one of Marlene's um, sort of skin tone paints and gone in and just added that onto the face. I apologise that that bit wasn't recorded. I must have forgotten to record that bit. Um, then I'm going back in with the pen and I'm just going back over some of those lines on the face and those details just to uh, pull them back out. So I've gone in with a Posca pen to add some green into the eyes. I just wanted to give her some nice green eyes and just going to add some other tones of green just to kind of calm that proper bright leafy green. These palette pastels are also from Jane Davenport. You will have seen me use these before if you've watched previous videos from me. Um, these are great for doing just this. I've had these palette pastels a very long time. I really don't know what, if I can't get more. I don't know what I'm going to do when they've run out other than maybe buy a makeup palette that I can use instead. Um, the only thing about these palette pastels is they will transfer. So a bit of workable fixative is needed over the top just to uh, keep those in place or a quick spray of hairspray is also quite useful. So you can see here, I'm just using those to add a little bit more shadow onto the face just to give it a bit more depth. So then I decided I wanted to give her some color to her hair. So I've gone in with a really pale lilac -y color as my first uh, base color. And then I'm going to add some other colors over the top of that just to give it a little bit more movement to add some depth to the hair as well.
So who doesn't love a good splatter when you're a mixed media artist? Um, adding some splatters onto the hair, just covering the face because um, you know, I don't really want her to have white splatters on her face. Um, that just kind of breaks up that expanse of hair a little bit. And here I'm just going in with the palette pastels again and just giving those lips a bit more of a blush just to um, make them stand out a bit more from the rest of the page. So those little tools that I'm using, they are just makeup applicators. They're nothing special. I know Jane Davenport does sell um, special little tools, but the little makeup applica applicators work perfectly well. Um, this is another stencil from Art by Marlene. I'm just adding some um, dots onto my background as well, just to break it up and add another layer of interest. Um, then I have grabbed some stamps from Marlene. This is one from the actual set that are like postage marks. Um, the ink that I'm using is one from a previous advent calendar from Marlene. It's just a really nice fuchsia pink. Um, and then I'm just going in with some other stamps that I've grabbed from previous advent calendars. So I'm just adding some marks onto the page really. So if you are following this tutorial video, any mark making stamps that you've got will work perfectly now just to add more levels of interest to your page. So then we need a few highlights on the face. I'm just going in with a white pen and just smudging the ink while it's still wet, just so it's a softer look. Um, and um, adding some little, little dots onto the hair. Then the next thing that I need is some words. So the perfect place to go, obviously because I'm using Marlene's things, is I found a quote in her um, Golden Oldie sticker quote book and I thought I would just handwrite it myself. So I'm using a Posca pen and just going to fit my text around the face that I've drawn. I think this is one of the pages that I actually finished and thought... I don't mind this face, I think it's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm realising that I have definitely got a way that I do faces. I think the more you practice, the more you will develop your own style when it comes to faces. And it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it doesn't matter as long as it's yours. So, um, quite often when I do text as well, I go in and add a little bit more. Shadowing on one side of the letter just makes it stand out a bit more. And then of course, I've got to add some dots using my dotty stamp as well so that's it for this little tutorial i hope you've enjoyed watching i hope you've enjoyed the video found some inspiration give it a try get practicing drawing faces yourself it's really not as scary as you think thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon